All right, so this quick video here is about three phase voltage imbalance, and I just want to talk quickly about why it matters. And so when you see these, um, this is actually an article that I did a while back at HVACRschool.com, a tech tip, and just talking about voltage imbalance. And so when you think of three phases, you have three different phases of power that are out of phase with each other, but they're not they're not the full 180 degrees out of phase with each other like we're like we're used to. And so because of that. We have about 120 degrees phase difference between each. If you take 360 divided by three, that's 120 degrees of difference from peak to peak in between the three phases. And so it's really important for a three phase motor for it to work properly and not to overheat, not to have um, long term issues for the voltages to be the same on the three phases. Generally speaking, when we have issues with imbalance between the phases, it's generally due to a voltage drop. On one of the phases and that can be due to a issue where it's connected into a breaker down the line somewhere a disconnect could be a lot of different things can cause it but one of the more common causes would be the actual uh, controls inside the unit itself so the contactor or starter that's feeding a particular device so you can have three phase voltage imbalance coming into a unit say a, a package unit or something um, or you can also have three phase voltage imbalance coming out of a contactor or a starter or something. So the, the T1, T2, T3 lines. And so when you calculate voltage imbalance, what you're actually doing is you're taking all three of them and measuring them all together. So you're doing every combination and then you're coming up with the average and then you're seeing the percentage of difference based on the average. That's that's essentially how the math works out. From a practical standpoint, though, what am I going to do in the field when I want to measure three phase voltage imbalance? I'm gonna, I don't know if you can see my cursor here, so I'm going to point here. So I take my contactor and I would measure between each leg and L, L1, L2 and L3. This is generally going to be really only effectively done if the system is under load. So if it's actually running. So I'm going to measure in between each of the three. And then I'm going to figure out what the average is of the three. So you take the three, multiply them times each other and divide by three. And then that's going to um, give me what my average is. And then I'm going to compare what I have on each leg to my average to come up with the percentage of difference. Again, that's a lot of math. But, you know, from a typical method that you're going to do in the field, you're really just looking at it to see if you have anything that seems out of balance. Um, you're not necessarily on every single service call going to do a voltage drop calculation because you they're generally going to be very close to each other and, and it's not generally going to be a concern. But in some cases, uh, you may be tasked with doing a voltage drop calculation and that's how you do it. And so you would do an under load on the L side and then you do it under load on the T side. And if you saw a significant difference, then that would indicate that it's the contactor or starter that's causing the problem. But another thing you can do, and I just talked about this on the most recent podcast, talking about using your voltmeter as a voltage drop device. If you want to just test your control, you can put one leg of your meter here one leg of your meter here, so L1 to T1, and measure and see if you have any voltage drop, and then do the same on the other two. Now the question comes up, what is an acceptable voltage drop across a, uh, a contactor relay? Really depends on the voltage. I don't have an exact number for you, and I know, I know you probably wish I did, um, but generally speaking, if you see anything approaching a volt, uh, that's usually starting to become a problem. And now you can compare to other relays and contactors on equipment nearby, and that'll give you a really good baseline. In, in general, it's good to compare to other similar devices and see what you're getting. Um, but that'll give you some sort of indication of where you stand um, by measuring for voltage drop across. So you're actually taking your voltmeter, putting one lead there, one lead there. But then you can also do your, your three-phase balance calculation. So if you go down further into this article, we talk a little bit more about what is acceptable and unacceptable. And I just want to cover this. Really, what, what we look for is we would love to see voltage imbalance of no more than 1%. That's what the Department of Energy talks about from the standpoint of optimum efficiency. We'd like to see less than 1% variation. Up to 4% uh, is acceptable um, based on some industry sources, um, but I would like to see anything above 1%. You, you start to look into it and see what you can do to reduce it. So that's very, very little change. Let's say you had 240, volt, um, 240 volts between phases, then that would only be 2.4 volt difference from the average. As soon as I started seeing anything more than that, I would want to start looking into it. Um, but just to make it even easier, we created this voltage imbalance calculator that you see here. There's a link for it at the bottom of this video. If you go to the resources tab, you hover over the resources tab and then you scroll down to where it says voltage imbalance calculator. This is also available on the mobile version, but it requires that you like click a little tiny arrow. I'm going to work on making that a little easier. And then it'll pull this up open and you can see it's hvacschool.com forward slash resources forward slash voltage imbalance calculator, which is uh, tricky because you got some dashes in there too. So 
I should probably make an easier link. Um, so just to give credit where credit's due, uh, I worked with my web developer to help make this voltage uh, calculator. And the original version of this was a uh, spreadsheet made by uh, Chris Camilletti. So thank you, Chris, for, for making this. So if you just measure your different um, L1, L2, L1, L3, whatever, and you can also do this on the T side, like I had mentioned, uh, it doesn't have to be on just the L side. So let's say we had 240 volts and then we had uh, 237 on the other one. And then on the other side, we had 242. Once you get them all entered, you calculate voltage imbalance, and it's going to tell you whether or not you are in the acceptable range. Our voltage imbalance here is 1.11, uh, which is going to result in a 2.48% motor temperature increase, which is kind of a cool little thing we added in there. What this is saying is it's advisable to decrease imbalance to below 1% if possible. So let's look and see if there's any way we can reduce this imbalance. But let's make it a little more extreme, and we'll increase that range a little bit. Now we've got a over 4% because now we're, we're between 249 and 240. Our average voltage is 239.67, and now our motor temperature increase is a whopping 32.54%. So that shows you why it's so important to keep your voltage properly in balance. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, you can always find out more by going to hvacrschool.com. That is the website, and that's where we have a couple handy calculators. Thanks for watching. We'll uh, talk again soon. Mm -hmm.